हेलो एस्पेरेंट्स ऑफ वेरी वाम गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल एंड टुडे इज दिसंबर थर्टी टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन एंड सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक्स टॉपिक वन इज कैलरी पया टू द सेकंड टॉपिक इज बैलम केप्स फेस्टिवल द थर्ड इज नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ माउंटेनियरिंग एंड एलाइड स्पोर्ट्स द फोर्थ वन इज वेस्टर्न फ्राइट कॉरिडोर देन द फिफ्थ वन इज स्नो एक्स देन द सिक्स वन इज डल लेक एंड द लास्ट टॉपिक इज अर्लीस्ट संस्कृत इंस्क्रिप्शन इन साउथ इंडिया ओके सो बिगनेट विद दी कलरी पट्टू सो बेसिकली दिस इज अ टाइप ऑफ आर्ट मार्शल आर्ट व्हिच इज बेस्ड ऑन द एंशंट नॉलेज ऑफ द ह्यूमन बॉडी ओके सो कलरी पट्टू इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ मार्शल आर्ट सो इट वाज ओरिजिनेटेड इन केरला ड्यूरिंग थर्ड सेंचुरी बीसी एंड टू द सेकंड सेंचुरी एडी इट इज नाउ प्रैक्टिस्ड इन केरला एंड इन सम पार्ट्स ऑफ तमिलनाडु एज़ वेल ओके so basically it's a kind of martial art which is pra practiced in the southern pa part of india especially in the uh, kerala and in some part of tamil nadu okay so uh, it is practiced is called kalari uh, okay kalari uh, and this malayalam word that signifying as a kind of gymnasium okay so sometimes you can you guys can see that uh, with the help of sword and all that this kalari pattu is being um, is played okay so it is literally means threshing floor or battlefield okay so the word कलारी कलारी फर्स्ट अपीयर्ड इन दी तमिल संगम लिटरेचर टू डिस्क्राइब बोथ अ बैटलफील्ड एंड कॉम्बैक्ट एरेना ओके सो बेसिकली दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम दिस वर्ड कलारी हैव बीन अपीयर्ड इन द तमिल संगम लिटरेचर एंड इट इज समहाउ क्लासिफाइड एज द बैटलफील्ड एंड द कॉम्बैक्ट एरेना इट इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट फाइटिंग सिस्टम इन एग्जिस्टेंस ओके सो दिस काइंड ऑफ मार्शल आर्ट इज वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट फाइटिंग सिस्टम इट इज आल्सो कंसीडर्ड एज द फादर ऑफ मॉडर्न कुंफू ओके सो फादर ऑफ मॉडर्न कुंफू इज फॉर द कलारी पायट टू then another topic is belam caves festival okay so why it was in news recently because andhra pradesh government uh, is hosting the Be belam caves festival in january 2020 to popularize the belam caves okay so it is in uh, andhra pradesh okay and somehow it is uh, hosting this belam caves festival the name kandan volu sambarol ralu sambaralu okay कंडना वोलू सांबर आलू दिस हैज बीन प्रपोज फॉर द फेस्टिवल कंड वोलू वॉज द एंशियन नेम ऑफ कर्नूल डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओके सो दिस कंडन वोलू वॉज द एंशियन नेम ऑफ कर्नूल डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड दिस अबाउट द बेलम केव्स एंड दिस दैट्स वाई बेलम केव्स फेस्टिवल वॉज इन न्यूज ओके सो लोकेशन ऑफ बेलम केव्स इज ऑल्सो नोन एज बेलम गुहालू इन कर्नूल डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश इज द सेकंड लॉन्गेस्ट केव इन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट ओपन टू द पब्लिक ओके सो समहाउ इट इज द सेकंड लॉन्गेस्ट केव एंड द लॉन्गेस्ट नेचुरल केव इन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट इज क्रीम लियत प्राह इन मेघालय ओके सो दिस वन क्रीम लियत प्राह केव्स आर द लॉन्गेस्ट एंड द सेकंड लॉन्गेस्ट इज दिस बेलम केव्स ओके now formation of this cave is from more than 1000 years old and it was formed by a constant flow of underground water over a period of time okay so because of the underground water this bel belam caves have been formed okay so geographical features are these are renowned for the speleothem speleothem structure speleothem are secondary mineral deposit form in the cave okay such as stalactite and stalagmite formations okay so somehow these are the geographical features of this caves and in the historical background are these caves were occupied by jain and buddhist monk so the jain and buddhist monks in andhra pradesh uh, occupied these caves the presence of 4500 year old vessel from the pre buddhism era ensures the same so uh, it, it is somehow uh, uh, a spot for jain and buddhist monk too okay so this was the historical background of the belam caves now what is the stalactites and so here here is the map and here are the belam caves here near chennai and bangalore we can see here in the andhra pradesh in the center uh, near kurnool it is the it is situated okay so uh, stalactites uh, stalactite and stalagmites these are the two uh, different um, broad features of uh, that uh, floor on the caves so stalactites hangs at isles of different diameters normally they are broader they are based tapered towards the free and showing a variety of forms so there are some kind of variety of the rocks in this state then stalagmites rise up from the floor of the caves in fact stalagmites from due to dripping water from the surface and through the thin pipe of the stalactite immediately blow it so these are the two kinds in which these are divided okay so these are the stalactites and the stalagmites the next topic is national institute of mountaineering and the allied sport 
in short it is known as nimas okay so why it was in news because recently a cycling expedition which consists of staff from national institute of monitoring and allied sport reached yangon that means they reached myanmar before few days only that means on 25th december so it will be cycling through myanmar thailand and malaysia so these the cycling expedition will be cycling through myanmar thailand and malaysia up to malaysia singapore border okay so from at uh, from beginning at from the uh, myanmar so uh, they have reached myanmar and now they will be uh, going to thailand malaysia and they will be go up to malaysia singapore border okay so ministry of defense is funding the expedition so this expedition is being funded by the ministry of defense okay now what is national institute of mountaineering and allied sport so it is an advanced sport training institute and it is located in the west kamang district of arunachal pradesh so west kamang kamang district of arunachal pradesh uh, is the place where it is situated and it operates under the control and superintendence of the ministry of defense so under the superintendence of ministry of defense it is operated the institute offers training across land air and water a first of its kind that allowed civilians to experience challenges across a variety of outdoor surfaces as well as pursue a career in adventure sports so from the name itself somehow it is clear so it is having a training across land air and water and it provides a structured training to defense personnel as well okay so if ministry of defense is funding the expedition so somehow it is uh, giving the training to defense personnel too the next topic is western freight corridor okay so the dedicated freight corridor cooperation of india in short it is known as dfccil it has opened more than 300 km section between rewadi which is in haryana to madar which is in rajasthan madar for commercial trial runs okay so it is a freight corridor and it is the first section to be opened on the under construction western freight corridor okay so it will be 1500 km long which will begin at dadri in uttar pradesh and it just stretch till the country's largest container port jawaharlal nehru port trust near mumbai passing through uttar pradesh haryana rajasthan gujarat and maharashtra okay so it is like uh, the dfccil under which is under the ministry of railway it is uh, um, making it it is a special purpose vehicle tasked with planning and completion of 3000 306 km of dedicated freight corridors so there will be so many freight corridors but it is in the western zone so somehow it is saying that it will be the western freight corridor which will be under the dfccil that means dedicated freight corridor corporation of india so either western or eastern all the freight corridor will be under this organization okay so the dfc corridor will run only freight trains the cons the construction of western dedicated freight corridor project will enable the decongestion of existing over saturated path with thereby effectively improving punctuality of passenger trains okay so freight corridor it will be a, a kind of railway line okay and as the ministry of railway uh, um, is the dfccil is under the ministry of railway so somehow the freight corridor will be made for it okay so this is about the western freight corridor the next topic is snow x okay so why it was in news because recently national aeronautics and space administration that means nasa they have launched a seasonal campaign and uh, it will be for understanding that how much water is contained in each winter snowfall and how much will be available when it melts in the spring okay so somehow how much water is getting evaporated and then how much water is coming down in the form of uh, snow this will be the study by the nasa Okay, so it is a five-year program which is known as Snow X, and it was initiated in two thousand and sixteen, and somehow it will go for five years. Okay, so key points of this Snow X is it will focus on uh, its focus is in North America, but NASA's overall target is optimal strategies for mapping global snow water equivalent with remote sensing and model leading to Earth system exploration mission. Okay, so somehow it is trying that uh, all the areas in the uh, on the globe. wherever the snowfall is there so somehow it will use the method of remote sensing okay so what is matter it is uh, about uh, obtaining information which is from a distance itself we can get the information with the help of aircraft and satellites okay so uh, currently nasa has no global satellite mission to track and study this um, snow x but still uh, snow is a vital source of water for drinking and this is the reason somehow nasa is trying to understand that how much water is being utilized in the form of snowfall and then it converts into drinking water too okay so this is about the snow x the next topic is dal lake okay so dal lake it is a lake in shrinagar 
as we all know that it is a famous lake in Srinagar and it is in the capital of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir because now it is a uh, Union Territory, Jammu Kashmir is a Union Territory. So, Dal Lake is a misnomer as Dal in Kashmiri means lake. Okay, so Dal Lake, a misnomer, it is like Dal is already uh, in Kashmiri, it is already as, uh, uh, it is already a name for the lake itself. Okay. So, it is in integral to tourism and recreation in Kashmir and it is named the jewel in the crown of Kashmir or Srinagar's jewel. So, this is the name which has been given to Dal Lake, jewel in the crown of Kashmir or Srinagar's jewel. So, it is also an important source for commercial operations for fishing and water plant harvesting. Okay. It almost covers an area of 18 square kilometers and it is a part of a natural wetland including its floating gardens. Okay, so this is about the Dal Lake and it is covering an area of 18 square kilometers. So that's why because uh, winters are the spot uh, time, uh, not the winters because Dal Lake get uh, freezed but after that it will be the time for tourists to come and explore the beauty of Kashmir. Okay, so there are floating gardens known as Rad in Kashmir blossom with lotus flower during July and August. So, this is the time where most of the tourists come to visit this land which is known as heaven and the earth. Okay, so the wetland is divided by causeways into four basins. So, this is the wetland which have been divided by in four basins. So, one is Gagribal, then there is Lokutdal, then there is Bordal and Nagin. Okay, so these are the uh, four different basins. So, Lokut Dal and the Bord Dal each have an island in the center known as Rup Lang and Sona Lang respectively. Okay. So, these are the Rup Lang. It is also known as Char Chinari. Okay. So, these are the places which are divided uh, and in there are the four basins here. So, keep this in mind. The Gagri Bal, the Lokut Dal, Bord Dal and the Nagin. Okay. So, the houseboat which are also known as Shikara are closely associated with Dal Lake which provide accommodation to tourists in Srinagar. Okay. So, somehow it is the accommodation uh, in the Srinagar, uh, which are Shikaras. Okay, so this is about the uh, Dal Lake. See how beautiful it is. The last topic is earliest Sanskrit inscription in South India. So, why it was recently in news? Because Archaeological Survey of India, that is ASI, it has discovered the earliest Sanskrit inscription in South India. Okay, and it is also an earliest epigraphic evidence, epigraphy, epigraphy, basically it is a study of ancient inscriptions for the Saptamatrika cult. Okay, so for the Saptamatrika cult, uh, the study of ancient inscription is the, uh, actually epigraphy is the uh, study of the ancient inscriptions, but in the South India, it is for the Saptamatrika cult. Okay, now what is Saptamatrika cult? They are the group of seven female deities which are worshipped in Hinduism as personifying the energy of their respective consorts. Okay, so these are the seven female deities which are worshipped. Okay, in the Hinduism. Okay, so another inscription in Prakrit language and in Brahmi character belonging to the first century AD was also found. Okay, so now another inscription in Prakrit language was also found which has which were having the Brahmi characters and it is said that it has been belonging to the first century AD. Now, what are the key points of this? So, inscriptions related to Saptamatrika from the uh, name itself, Saptamatrika is clear. That means the seven deities. Sapta means seven and Matrika means female deities. Okay. So, the it found inscriptions record construction of Prasad. A temple is there. Then a mandap is there. Consecration of images by a person named Karthik at the temple of God at Saptamatrika at Tambre. Okay, so here in the Tamrep, in the sub, goddess Saptamatrika, a person named Karthik, uh, inscriptions of Karthik, a mandap and a temple have been found. And location is in the Tamrep is the ancient name of Chabrolu. Okay, so Chabrolu is the new name. Earlier it was Tamrep in the Andhra Pradesh. So earlier references to Saptamatrika is, uh, earlier references have been found in the early Kadamba copper plates. So, Kadamba copper plates are there in the and the early Chalukyas and Eastern Chalukyas copper plates dated around 680. So, these were the early references of the Saptamatrika. Then, language and character all the available record that the found ins inscriptions, also known as Chebrulu inscriptions, is in Sanskrit and in Brahmi characters. Okay. So, uh, they are in the Sanskrit, they are in Prakrit, and the characters are the Brahmi characters. Okay. Sorry, it is the Prakrit, not in Sanskrit. Okay. Then issued by Satvahana King Vijaya in 207 AD. After death uh, in 2007 AD, it was issued by the Satvahana King Vijaya. 
okay so somehow we can say that uh, in the inscription is from that time well, uh, related which is alike within period of 207 AD so for the Nagarjuna inscription of Ishak Vaku king Ihwala Chantumula issued in the 4th century was considered the earliest Sanskrit inscriptions in the South India. Okay, so this is about the this is about the Sanskrit inscription. Okay, so in the in the Nagarjuna inscription of Isha Vaku King, Ehavala Chantamula. Okay, so they issued it in fourth century. So it is a quite difference between this fourth century AD and the two hundred seven AD. Now, who were the Satvahanas? So in the Deccan, the Satvahanas established their independent rule, and they established their independent rule after the decline of the Mauryas. Okay, so they ruled for about four hundred fifty years, which was a quite good time, and they were also known as the Andras. And because of this, the Andhra Pradesh name was is, is still there. So the Puranas and the Nasik and the Nangan inscription are important sources of this history of Satvahanas, and the founder of Satvahana dynasty was Simuk. Okay, so Simuk was the founder of Satvana dynasty, which is the greatest ruler of Satvana dynasty was Gautamiputra Satkarni. Okay, so Gautamiputra Satkarni was the greatest ruler and uh, uh, they were remarkable progress in the field of trade and industry because in the Satvahana rule, the progress in the field of trade and industry was a lot as compared to other rurals, rulers and the greatest port of Satvahanas was Kalyani on the western Deccan. The Gandha Keslas, the Gandham on the east coast were important seaports. So these were the uh, important post of the important seaport of the east coast. So the Satvanas patronized Buddhism and Brahmanism. Brahmanism were revived by Satvanas along with the performance of Ashwamedan Rajasuya sacrifices. So the Brahmanism was revived by the Satvanas and they also patronized Buddhism and Brahmanism. Okay, they also patronized the Prakrit language and literature. Okay, so somehow they were also, they also respected this Prakrit language and the literature which were written in the Prakrit language. So this was about the Satvanas and aspirants. This was today's lecture and thanks for watching.